Hi, folks, and welcome to the Lifetime Athlete Podcast. I'm your host, John Zombro. This is episode number 115, and today's topic is training tips during social distancing. As we're all dealing with the coronavirus pandemic, we need to observe the precautions and recommendations from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention and other organizations to minimize the impact of this tragedy on public health. One of the major areas of emphasis is social distancing or minimizing contact with others, at least temporarily, in order to attempt to reduce the spread of infection. For lifetime athletes, this probably means that you will not be at the gym or in group fitness or team practice situations temporarily. I've got some tips I'd like to offer to help you through this challenging phase. But before I get there, I'd also like to touch on some general health suggestions that I shared recently in an article on thelifetimeathlete.com. First of all, make sure that everyone around you and in your circle has what they need to comply with the appropriate recommendations. Do whatever you can to help friends or family members who may be older or immune system compromised have what they need to be safe. Food, supplies, and the knowledge that they can ask you for help is an essential reassurance. Let's do all we can to support our tribe. Get as much sleep as you need, and maybe a little more. When you are well rested, your immune system is more powerful. Exposure to a pathogen will statistically result in less severe infection for those with high functioning immunity. Now, perhaps more than ever, is the time to eat the most nutrient-dense diet possible. Avoid junk, fast, and processed foods, which can increase inflammation and dysregulate metabolism. Place an emphasis on whole, fresh, natural foods, and be cognizant of any autoimmune trigger foods, trigger foods excuse me, that your body is sensitive toward. Nourish and fuel your body to be resistant to insults, which includes viruses. We're going to come back to training a a bit later, but I wanted to say right away, keep your training going, but back off the volume and intensity a bit. You want to maintain fitness and conditioning, but you don't want your training workload to be too high right now. High workload training can be valuable in an overreaching phase to force adaptation in the body, but this can make you fatigued and sometimes immunosuppressed. Light to moderate training will increase your resiliency. Don't push too hard or long because doing so can result in an increased susceptibility to infection. And since you probably won't be at the gym or in a group fitness class or team practice, it's a great time to use virtual training aids like Strava, Peloton, Zwift, or others. Do your best to manage stress. Just like you optimize your workouts, do the same for your work, relationships, and schedule. Find that Goldilocks amount that keeps you energized but not exhausted. All these lifestyle factors work together, and now's the time to achieve your greatest balance. Try to get some extra parasympathetic breathing or meditation into your life. Accept that your season or goal event may be postponed or canceled. Unfortunately, major change is necessary to attempt to protect public health. You will do well to rethink and reprioritize your focus or periodization model until things settle down. Trying to force an agenda is an unproductive endeavor at best and can result in unnecessary frustration. And lastly, what I'd say is try to maintain a positive attitude. This isn't Pollyanna talk. Things eventually will get better. Take it one step and one day at a time. Getting enraged or despondent over this pandemic can actually impair your own health in the process, as prolonged or excessive negativity can alter hormones and neurotransmitters. Just try to be reasonable, and that's all I'm asking. Now, the next tip that I'd like to offer is, in keeping our training alive, do the best that you can to get outside in the fresh air wherever you can, wherever it's appropriate and and you determine it's safe to do. This is valuable for so many reasons, and it can keep you from feeling shut in or quarantined, as well as, again, getting the benefits of the air and sunlight and uh, being in the natural world. Walk, jog, bike, whatever is appropriate, whatever you have available based on where you live and, again, uh, your ability to access it. 
And you may even consider using the playgrounds and outdoor equipment if you can do so without getting too close to others. Um, And use your judgment, of course, and and wear gloves. Don't touch your face. But a lot of times if you come upon, let's say, uh, some uh, monkey bars and nobody's around, it's probably fine to go ahead and rep out some pull-ups and do some other exercises there as your station and then move on. That um, is what I'll be doing. Uh, Next, if you're training indoors and you have limited space or equipment, be creative with your exercise variations and your body positions. And this can take on many forms, but uh, sometimes uh, when we're trying to think, oh, how can I make an exercise um, challenging or different or get a different stimulus from it? Well, you can perform your presses uh, while holding an isometric lunge, for one example, and there are many. If you want to make a lightweight uh, more challenging, let's say you only have a few lightweight dumbbells available at home or even uh, various objects that aren't necessarily official fitness equipment, uh, you can simply employ isometric holds at different parts of a range of motion with an exercise, or you can slow down the speed of movement and or both. And these can make uh, lightweights feel heavier and simple movements uh, become more challenging. Experiment with the order of the exercises that you're performing. Try some circuits versus straight sets. Use supersets. Uh, I should probably explain some of these things. Circuits, let's say a circuit would be if you have six exercises, you would do one set of each of the exercises and then another round through the circuit. That's one model. Straight sets would be, let's say you're doing four sets of each exercise. You would do all four sets of one exercise before moving to the next. It's nice to shake it up, break it up from time to time. A superset would be an exercise done in combination Uh, many different variations on that theme. You can use pre-exhaustion, which might be to do an isolation exercise followed by a compound movement. An example, if you have the light dumbbells, would be to perform some lateral raises with the dumbbells prior to doing presses to, again, get more localized muscle fatigue in your shoulders. Uh, You can use clusters, which is uh, a group of exercises, or drop sets where you're uh, dropping weight if you have multiple weights or uh, resistance Uh, bands or other things available. Now I want to say safety first, then use creativity and imagination. So doing chair workouts where you have, let's say, a a kitchen chair uh, and you put two together uh, or back to back with a little space in between them, you can use them for dips. You can do uh, push-ups, various things on the chair with, you know, arms on the chair, feet on the chair, Again, being creative, lifting the chairs. You can increase body weight with a backpack with things in it, or if you have a weight vest, that's excellent as well. Uh, You can lift implements if you have them in your yard or back porch or garage, like a cinder block or a landscape rock. Uh, There really are very few limits to finding ways to train. Using good knowledge and an open mind, you can work out Superman in a phone booth, or at least a good trainer can do so. Now, uh, also, you may want to consider using this time, and we don't know how long right now we're talking about, as a deloading period. And so all a a deload is, is when you intentionally reduce training to a lower than normal level. Oftentimes, a great example would be one one week out of a month. But again, since we don't know how long, we might say that could be potentially longer. But uh, this will allow you to emphasize recovery and let your body catch up a bit if that's applicable. If you've been training hard and, and certainly overreaching, that'll allow for super compensation in your body, make some adaptations. Or maybe you've even been overtraining and are a bit tired or have a minor injury. And this is a great time for healing and also shoring up the immune system. Maybe now's a great time to work more on mobility and range of motion and flexibility and owning that shape and position and control of how your body works in space. Uh, Looking at these potential areas of movement dysfunction, which most of us have, uh, pretty much all of us will have something. Uh, And that is... Uh, always good to be to be working on that, but sometimes uh, uh, when we have a change in front of us, this might be a good time. Uh, consider yoga, meditation, relaxation techniques, things that can also 
help you to uh, work on the parasympathetic side of that equation a bit and enhance recovery ability and, and immune function, just decreasing stress through the whole body. You can do that again with these types of exercise strategies. Um, and also explore heat and cold as you have it available to kind of augment training effects, uh, maybe just not to excess. So if you're lucky enough to have uh, a sauna or a cold tank, depending upon where you live, uh, doing a bit of that for that hormetic stimulus or, or hormesis uh, can be valuable. Um, but if you don't, you certainly can use a hot bathtub or a cold tub or shower and get some benefits, which can actually actually have been shown in terms of of the heat to improve uh, cardiovascular fitness. Again, most of those most of that work's been done with people taking traditional Finnish saunas for longer periods of time. Um, but we can certainly try to get a, a minimization of those benefits at home. And then also with the cold exposure, there's fairly strong evidence that that can help support the immune system as long as you don't overdo it. Uh, Another thing to say, and it's something I've messed around with uh, recently, I think I'll have a, a humorous video coming out on it at some point, is I've been... I've been working out in a rubber suit. <laughs> yeah, I, I have a rubber suit that I actually I got it at a like a white elephant party a couple of years ago, and I've been saving it for an experiment. That now's the time that I'm working on that, and so I've been doing some like light circuit training with a sweatsuit on, with the rubber suit over it, and comparing uh, my body temperature and weight loss through perspiration and, and a few other things uh, with uh, both an infrared sauna and also a traditional Finnish sauna. Um, and so I'll, I'll have some information about that available later. But uh, you know, one thought would be, hey, you know what? If you want to make your workout kind of a sweat fest and you don't mind a little extra laundry, uh, put on some extra things and you know, there's another benefit for you there. So that's probably enough for now. I just wanted to uh, share some, some deep concerns and thoughts and respect for everyone and also to give you some ideas on what to do with your training during this time. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to get them to me through the lifetimeathlete.com or the social media contact information that you will find there. And if you're enjoying this uh, information, a rating and review is both welcomed and appreciated. I hope you all can stay safe and healthy through these tough times and that you can help others to do the same. Thanks again. This is Coach Jay-Z signing off from the Lifetime Athlete. 